Welcome to Ear Biscuits. I'm Rhett. I thought I had to sneeze again, but I don't. What? I'm Link, the guy who thought he had to sneeze again, but he didn't. You sneezed three times a second yeah, ago. Try to keep it even numbers. This week at the round table of dim lighting, we, we gotta catch up, brother, because we both went on separate family vacations. And I don't know if have... I can call mine a vacation. I'll call it a sightseeing excursion via RV. Uh, I'm very excited about it to hear from you and for you to hear from me. Because yeah. we have, we actually, we got in um, uh, Monday uh, uh, of this week, so coming right back from vacation. We saw each other in the morning, getting ready to shoot Good Mythical Morning. At and, the uh, desk. And uh, we didn't even really ask. I mean, I just. I, well, I, it's implied I, I, I that asked, we shouldn't. I just said, how was it? I didn't want, right. but, but you knew that I didn't want you to tell me any details. Right. It was just good, that's all you said. Right, it's like nobody, I mean nothing tragic happened that like on a personal level we need to discuss before we publicly and for monetization purposes yeah. like conduct our friendship. Well that's the thing that you, you, you gotta remember about Ear Biscuits is that. I'm not doing this for the money though, I'm doing this for. <laughs> For the just the love, you of didn't the, have to bring in the monetization. No, I, I mean that's, you don't want people to think about that. No, nope. I mean we talk enough about how you need to buy the two T-shirts that we're wearing right now. Yeah, uh, it, just let that just sort of wash over people. Right, but we we hold back these conversations so then we can have them raw, unfiltered for the first time. So I'm going to be finding out details about your vacation that normal friends would have already covered. Right, but, but we've waited days. I've I've been wondering, you've been you've been hinting people have been because everybody the whole crew yeah. knew you were going to be in an RV <laughs> and everybody was like how was it everybody want everybody and it was like you, and you haven't been divulging anything but everybody's asking like because they know something went wrong you know it's like but put Link course in his family in an RV something's something's bound to go wrong yeah. I mean, so, so people aren't asking because they they want it to be good. They're asking because they want it to be entertaining. Yeah. And you know what? That's why you got an I RV, the, just so you could talk like, about it. Well, Lando, who is eight now, was invited by a friend of his to go on an RV trip with their family. And I'm like, son, don't do it. When was this? You don't want to be trapped in a vehicle. Did you just, Sorry. did your seat just sink? It did. Stop distracting me with your seat height. Trying to get to the right place. I said, you don't wanna be trapped with another family, son, out in a vehicle. You wanna be trapped with our family. And that fell through, and he was excited. So then I always wanted to fulfill his dream of going on an RV trip, and I started. it started to become my dream. But what really put it over the edge was this right now. <laughs> like knowing that like, it, it, it's a beautiful thing to, to, like, to take a risk and okay, put your whole family at recreational risk because even in the worst case, well I won't say worst case, I don't wanna say somebody dies or gets maimed, but like in a bad case scenario, like, like the vacation sucks, it still is redeemed by the fact that I can talk about it here. It's like, it's like a friend of mine said, you know what, when we moved out to California and he knew that we were in the video making business, he said, remember it's better to have a good story than a good time. <laughs> so I kind of live by that. I, I, I still don't know I just how like I feel knowing, about that advice, but. but. Well, I just like knowing even if something goes raw or sideways, that goes like, well, raw? at least I can talk about it. Well, you're the one who said raw. Yeah, but I like didn't say chafing, it like that. You usually say goes wrong, but I kind of like goes raw. <laughs> yeah, it's Sounds. like, I thought these, these underwear would be comfortable, but they're going raw on me. <laughs> oh gosh. It's still a lot of chafing. Um, so I rented the RV. I did not purchase an RV. That would be stupid. Overkill. That would be stupid. Well, but a lot of people do purchase it. You don't want the RV. You don't want the RV owners to quit listening to your. And business. I ran into a bunch of those people. Well, I crossed paths with a bunch of those people. Yeah, and they knew that you were a renter. Mo you, had well, yeah. a, you had it all over. Maybe your I'll face. get back to that if if uh, if the more exciting things of my story don't pan out. Um, You're much too fit to be an RV owner. You know what I'm saying? Well, uh, <laughs> and even the RV forums say, "Well, you should you should rent an RV, and you should." And there was, you know, I was starting to wig out, like reading all the stuff leading up to it. They're like, "Well, you should, 
you should go on a short trip just to get a feel for it. You don't wanna go on a long trip. Sprint before the marathon. Yeah, you wanna just like get a feel for everything. You gotta know how to empty the tanks and there's so many tanks on an RV. I go to pick up the thing and the guy's walking me through it and (laughs) every time he would tell me something like, first thing he did was like, now you put put the garden hose on this and you fill it up with water. Got it? And then he, and there was a valve beside it and he was like, and then when you get to the place, you put their garden hose up to this place and you connect it semi-permanently. Got it? Hmm. And I, I noticed a pattern because then the next thing, he like squats down and there's, a, there's like two pull handles and a big pipe. And he was like, this is where you get rid of your, uh, what did he call it, gray water and your black water. And you gotta, you gotta hook up your their hose to run it into their septic tank before you pull this valve for the black water. Because if you pull the black water valve first, you're gonna have your family stinky all over you. Got it? Yeah. And every so he would, and then he was like, then you pull the gray one, and it runs the rest of the, the you know what? The black water out of the out of the tube flushes your, the system with your with your sink and your and your shower water. I got it. Got actually. it. I got it. And every single time, he'd be looking down, and he would look. He'd lock eyes with me, and he'd say, "Got it." And I just started. I looked at Christy. I was like, "What? I I have it. I don't know why he keeps looking at me." It's like I'm. I literally thought, "Do I have a stupid look on my face?" Well, you probably shouldn't ask that question. <laughs> Do you want me to answer it? Yeah. I mean, why did he keep saying? Is it? It's a. T- it's a tick that he has. Well, he is his job is explaining things to people and if, seeing if they got it. What what do you mean? I got I'm listening to you, man. I'm 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 a I'm a yeah, college yeah. graduate. But well, I'm that, an intern. That doesn't have anything to do with it. <laughs> a lot of people don't listen. Got it? And also, you do tend to have a look on your face that uh you tend to go into your own world, <laughs> usually not when somebody's talking. I mean, well, a lot of times <laughs> I know I maybe he only does it with you. Because there are times you that think it's my face. I, I'm I, no, I don't think you look stupid. I think you can sometimes have stupid looks. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I think like, are you, well, well, I think there's is a it like a far difference. off look? Yeah, it's a disengaged look. Okay, very off. And I, I'll own that. I known you. I've known you for so long that I know. I'd say seven out of ten sentences I start and then don't continue because I recognize that you're not ready. <laughs> I, not I, re- you I, can't you can't handle the truth. I recognize that you ain't gonna got it if I start if I keep talking. My my mind is somewhere, somewhere else. else. But but usually once I once but I when know you're, you're engaged about- and you're and you're sitting there watching something. At that point, I don't keep confirming. I just then I'm going with the flow. I was very engaged. I don't think it was my face because I was nervous about like pulling the dookie shoot at the wrong time. Yeah, you know, never want to do that. And there's like, I'm, we're not even inside the RV. There's gauges in there for water levels and generators and AC units and this is how the fridge, w- fridge won't work if it's not level. It's like all this stuff, you got ins and outs. But I got it and I brought it home. I, I pulled it into my driveway and I left it there for a couple of days just to get acclimated. I, I right. rented it two days early just so we could they could start packing stuff in it. The kids could put their shenanigans in there, their knickknacks and whatnot to be comfortable. And there'd be no excuses for not having everything because yeah. you have days for to, to just start putting stuff in and there. And not having fun. No excuse for not having fun. No excuses for that. And then I finally, I come home from shooting and we're immediately gonna get in the RV and go. Mm. It's go time. And it is pouring down rain. Yeah, it was raining a lot. I mean, it doesn't rain in here. There's a whole song about it. Yeah. Tony, Tony, Tony. Yeah. I, it yeah. never rains in Southern California. Yeah, great album. Well. Tony, Tony, Tony is out of touch, 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 Mm because it was raining, 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 like cats and dogs. You remember? Because you were leaving for your vacation at the same time, I guess. Just in a normal car, though. Genius. (laughs) So, so I'm, I hadn't filled up our tank with water, so I'm filling it up with water, weighing this thing down, get all my family in there. Filling up the the water tank for like this, Spigot and everything, and yeah, for flushing the toilet, for just like hooking a hose up to it. Yeah, and then you unhook the hose before you drive off. But when you get to a site, mm. you can use their water instead of using the water from your tank. Got it. Got, Got it. it. 
So I'm like, Christy, I need you to stand out in the rain, I'm sorry, and make sure I don't back into like my neighbor's car or something. I gotta back out of this driveway and I'm gonna back up the street into the cul-de-sac and I, I want you to say, if I can't see you in a mirror, if you can't see me in a mirror, I cannot see you and I do not wanna run over you at this mm, juncture. Right. But I need you to be out there. Bad way to start. Kill your wife right at the beginning. So, so I'm like, I'm, she gets out there, I put it in reverse, everybody's in, the dog's in. And I'm like, all right, Christy, I'm backing up. <laughs> so I start backing up and then all of a sudden, the RV hits something. Oh gosh. And it stops, <laughs> cold. What in the world did you hit? At the end of my driveway, it, it's at a slope, and then the street kind of goes up the other way. So crowns. between, it kind of crowns. So there's a, there's a ditch, by the way, with flowing torrential waters yeah. of rain going through it, that like a ditch. Well, the whole back end of the RV just like jammed into the asphalt of my street, just yeah. like. Just, you, you bottomed out. I bottomed out. <laughs> Cause when I pulled in, I was light. And I, you know what, come to think of it, when I pulled in, there was a little scrapey scrape. Yeah, so you had to immediately get all the kids to take all the stuff they wanted to <laughs> take like, to them and throw it out into the yard. <laughs> Start with the heavy stuff. <laughs> the largest kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get all the people besides you out. I wasn't gonna do that because it was pouring down rain mm -hmm. and I was like, oh crap. I start panicking a little bit, I gotta, I gotta hold this inside. I can't let my family see that <laughs> I'm crapping a brick and then I'm falling apart here. My wife's out in the rain. She's like, "You hit the street. You you hit the street. <laughs> that's not that's not how you want your vacation to start. You hit the street. And then what does I'm that like, even mean?" And I'm like, "Oh gosh." And I <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, solution, solution, solution. Focus on yeah. a positive solution." Use that engineering degree. So I remembered uh, around my house, I just start running over there. And you know, I, you know how when I start to get panicky and I'm trying to come up with a solution, I'm, I don't, I'm, not, I'm, I'm incommunicative. So I, I run out. You, you stop using real words. Yeah, I start. I'll say like the first half of a sentence. Like my family hates this. I'm like, and Chris, so Christy's tailing me around the house, and I'm like, I, 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 I got an idea. I, I can, I can, and then I start picking up the extra pavers mm. that the construction company used to like. Made make my driveway like little individual Land bridge. like pavers, so it's not like a concrete driveway. And so I grabbed those; and they're heavy. And then I just started. I'm like, hold the gate open, and I'm like, it's pouring down rain. I'm like, I made probably ten trips getting these heavy pavers filling in the ditch, like to make a. I pulled the RV back up, and then I started making a path for the back wheels. To, to elevate it. Yeah. Like t two concrete bridges. And then I, I mean, 30 minutes later, I'm like drenched, I'm sweating, I'm panicking. Like kids are coming out and they're like, are we still going on this <laughs> trip? I'm like, get back in the RV! Don't get, it's a danger zone out here! You might get hit, this I don't is, know what's happening. This is before you, you attempted I've, to cross the land bridge. Yeah. And okay. then I get them all back in, and I, except for Christy. Cause she, I, is she in a raincoat? She's in a raincoat. And I'm like, all right, I'm going for it. And I get in the car, and I, I smash on the brake in order to uh, pull the emergency brake. And then I cr I'm like, I'm cranking up the car, and I'm gonna back up slowly over the bridge that I've made. I crank it up, nothing, just dead as a doornail. Oh gosh. I'm like, God, crap, I'm like, I'm a failure. It was just, a, I was just like, I I was this close to just slamming my head against the steering wheel, just like, like can't, let, can't let him see just, you do that. Just like, gather around neighbors, look at your, fa look at the failure father. Yeah, can't let him he cannot, lose confidence in dad. He's been planning an RV trip for months. And he can't and leave he his own home. cannot get out of the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> Christy's hearing the, the failing crank. It like won't turn over. Okay. And I, I couldn't make eye contact with her. I just. Yeah, you shouldn't at that point. And then I was like, then I looked down and 
I did not have my foot on the brake. I was flooring the gas pedal of my RV. What? I f my had it pedal to the metal. I was like, because I, I wasn't familiar with the gas and the, the gas Is pedal. it on a different side of an RV? <laughs> <laughs> what? No, it's just, it's all a little further to the left. So what I thought. You were flooding it. I put, yeah, I was flooding it. I thought I was putting my foot smash right in the middle of the well, brake. I'm glad it didn't crank up. I know, I flooded the engine. Think about what could have happened. And so I took my foot off of the gas and I put it on the brake and I was like, oh, just like, just a prayer crank. And I, I cranked it and three times and it did, and it cranked. Third time. Charm. And then I'm like, now I gotta get over this, this center block bridge that I've made. Right. So I go over that and it's like, it took a little umph, like I didn't, I couldn't ease because I built quite a. Yeah, you gotta a, get up on the bridge. I had to be kind of aggressive. And I went up on it and then bam, like it cracks the whole bridge. Oh, I was gonna say, it had to crack the bridge. It cracked the bridge, and but I kept going and then we were, we were we were off. You're on the road. Well, I had to. I had now to. Now you got to get rid of the land bridge. Fifteen minutes to get rid of the land bridge. Right. And then Christy's like, "Go in the house. You're soaked. Just go in the house. Change. Take a breather. <laughs> you know what? We can get a. You can get a fresh start. Get a fresh set of clothes. <laughs> get a fresh now, underwear. Now that you've gotten out of the driveway, <laughs> it's time for a clothes change. Our first hour <laughs> of our RV trip was in the driveway. Yeah, that's good. Gosh. Okay. What, a, what an idiot. So I'm assuming the trip continued and you will, you will tell me more about that. That's all I'd care to share. Um, yeah, it, and it, gets, it gets better and more interesting after that. And but. I'll tell you a little bit about my trip as well. But first, we wanna let you know as we hinted at earlier that both shirts that we are wearing, I'm wearing the Constellation Good Mythical Morning tee and Link is wearing the Mythical Beast tee. This is not the I Am a Mythical Beast tee. No. This is an artist uh, collaboration. Um, it's got nine individually designed mythical beasts who are eating certain certain snacks that when you look closely, you see that there's a story to tell. Yeah, and they're all traditional, uh, well for the most part. It's a combination of traditionally recognized mythical beasts and then mythical beasts from the Rhett and Link universe, uh, like the Randler and the uh, Cockatrice and the Wellafiginol from our book. Uh, but also a Yeti eating an ice cream cone. Yeah, so. Uh, mythical dot store. Yeah, get also those. Also check out our Amazon store. Go to Amazon and. Uh, Amazon.com slash mythical? Yeah, is that absolutely. what that is? Yes. Your shirt is one of my favorites, the Constellation Good Mythical Morning shirt. <laughs> kind of hard to see on camera here, but you feel like a star. And in real life, it's, 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 it's easy to see how fashionable you will be. Um, Thanks for supporting entertainment. You know, it's. Uh, I need all the help I can get if I haven't established that. So I so I got on the road. I got I got some more stuff to talk about the RV, but I don't I don't want to hog every. I do want to hear about your trip. Well, RV less. Yeah. Well, trip to Palm Springs. First thing, we were right out of the driveway, just like a just like a bullet. I mean, it was no problem at all. Um, I didn't change clothes or anything. I just I didn't have to build a land bridge. I just I backed out and then. Got on the road. Kind of like every time you back out of your <laughs> yeah, driveway. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know you know my driveway. My driveway's not easy to get Steve, out of. You, it's well, let me tell you, brother, and don't put an RV up that <laughs> there, driveway. There's a lot that can go wrong with my driveway, but uh, you know, thankfully, we got right on the road. Um, we went to Palm Springs. Uh, you, you already know this if you follow me on Instagram. Shout out to Red MC on Instagram. That make, it doesn't even make sense to shout it, that's not, you're, you're like such a such a dad thing to say. I want people to know. Shout out to my, like it's not listening. I just want people to know if they wanna know about these things first. Before they happen. As they're happening. Red MC on Instagram. Christy, Christy did tell me afterwards, she was like, I thought about pulling up my phone and taking pictures of that bridge or. Oh, she the, should have. The look on your face. Yeah, I would've been into Get that. some video. I was actually my family but I didn't was, do it. My family was said. keeping up with your trip a little bit through the various Instagram stories from your kids and your wife. Oh yeah? Yeah. So that's how I knew and a I think I knew Christy, a little bit about what Christy was happening. Christy was texting Jesse because I was like, What you doing over there? You're not telling you're not telling anybody about what happened, are you? I, I she just said that there was some trouble getting out of the driveway. That's all that's all I knew. I did not know what that oh. meant. Um <laughs> I'm glad I got the full story though. Um you know, I had a great vacation. 
Uh, it was a vacation. It wasn't too adventurous. We we like stayed at a, a you know like a resort and spa situation. You know, mostly the the lounging beside the pool. When situ- you go to Palm Springs, is it like you're entering 1960 again? That's how I picture it. Uh, in a lot of ways, yeah. It's uh, you know it's like the birthplace of mid century modern architecture. So you go through these neighborhoods, and you could easily think if you didn't see the modern cars that you were, it was 1962. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, this yeah, One story houses, super mid-century modern, and they all kind of look similar, but then they've got like the different colored doors or whatever. Did and you th- Airbnb in one? You could probably do that. Uh, we didn't, we stayed at a hotel. Uh, but, and there's and there's like the there's a whole like movement that pays homage to those times gone by. So lots of neon signs, and lot, there's like a, a a bunch of old men who drive big old cars. It's kind of a place for old dudes who like to play golf, like some great golf uh, courses out there. And there's just a lot of old people. Uh, yeah, RV parks as it turns out, because I've I stayed in three. I actually passed a number of RV they, parks. You know, when, they were um. You think about it. A lot of old it, people. You think about it. Permanent residents of RV parks. When you know that you, you there's somebody out there that you know <laughs> is in an RV, you start seeing RVs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saw a lot of RVs. There's a lot of yeah. RVs on the road. It's called our vision. Yes. That's what you get <laughs> when your friend's in an RV yeah. and you're feeling for I them. had it all week. <laughs> but uh, Recreational vision. As I told you on the last podcast when we were getting ready to, to leave, mm-hmm. uh, as much as you wanted to you know, ride atop a mule down into the bottom of the Grand Canyon. Uh, I and you didn't, you weren't able to do that. I did get to ride at least a horse. Again, you already know this if you're following me on Instagram. I won't shout it out again. You Christy, are, you Christy, heard it the first time. Christy handed me her phone and showed me your Instagram picture. I kind of took it for you. It was I gloating. It, I rubbed it in a little bit. But also, I was on a white horse with a with a cowboy hat. Yeah, and apparently, I think I had the cowboy hat on backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what the comments said? Uh, a few comments uh, <laughs> pointed that out, and uh, I, I'm not 100 percent sure. I went back and looked at all the photos, and I was like, I don't know if it was on backwards or not. The guy, the guy probably did it on purpose. Did, did the cat come with the tour? Uh, no. Okay, so you we, didn't go buy a hat, did you? I did not buy a hat. No. Uh, in the place where How'd we were, we were getting ready to go. There was the option of wearing a helmet, and of course, uh, the kids have to wear a helmet. And then the adults have the option to wear a helmet. My Lock, wife, my, Locke wear a helmet on a horse? They are, ev- most everyone does. Okay, that's, uh, that's smart. And I think that it is the right choice, but yeah. I was like, I'm not gonna wear a helmet, I'm gonna wear that cowboy hat that they had up there. I was like, is that cowboy hat also available to wear? And then he was like, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I'm gonna wear that. And uh, it, you know it doesn't my wife offer was up, similar protection. No, the brim is stiff. I think that it would have offered some protection. But I was like, how much trouble can you get on a horse? And then my wife was like, what about, she got mad at me. She was like, what about what happened to Christopher Reeve? And I'm like, well, A, a he was jumping over things, and B, he had a freaking helmet on. He broke his neck. Is, I, this is I, this, that's, that's not what I'm trying to protect myself against. Yeah, hold on. D- did you do research in the midst of your argument to find out that he was wearing a helmet? How mm-hmm. would you know that? Well, I'm assuming he had a helmet on because he was in competition oh. as a oh, I get it, like a jumper. Okay, and they wear helmets because yeah, yeah, yeah. horses are jumping. My horse is going to go on a single wide trail at three miles per hour. I, I, do I don't think I need a helmet? <laughs> that was my decision. Caused a little contention, <laughs> but anyway, I put the cowboy hat on backwards. <laughs> got on the white horse. Like a boss. I mean. Now first of all, so we follow the trailer full, full of our horses. And so we, we, we don't, we, we, they just kinda looked at us and they like selected four horses. We never saw the horses. We drive to the place where we have access to the trail. And then the horses start getting out and they start matching us with horses. And so they like say, they bring this little horse out and they're like, that's for you, Shepherd. And then they, another horse, that's for you, second oldest boy, second boy, Locke. Um, and then this ma'am, this 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 horse is for you. And then there and then there's like, well, okay, what's the horse? What's the last horse? And they had three brown horses. And then out of the trailer comes this giant white horse. A giant horse. <laughs> and Jesse says, Oh no, don't put him on a white horse. <laughs> As if his ego all needs that. <laughs> and so I get on the white horse named Spanky. Which Spanky. really kind of takes the wind out of it. Uh and uh, this, the, the, the most notable thing about this trip 
was our guide. Yeah. Who had in a very interesting connection to you and what you were experiencing. My uncle? At the Grand Canyon. What? Well, I'll tell you that in a second, but quickly. Why don't you give me a teaser? <sighs> That's not how we do. Cause, it, Cause that comes a little bit later. Okay. This guy, Tony was his name, former bull rider. Tony of Tony, Tony, Tony? <laughs> no. That would be too perfect. Okay. Uh, and this- Former bull rider. So he, he I knew right off the bat this Glass guy jaw. This guy was a character. Just a character, had this like Midwest cowboy kind of accent that's not quite Southern, but you know, it's just interesting. Grub and paddy, uh, not paddy wagon, what's it called? Yeah. Chuck wagon. I shook his hand. Yeah? And it was like, it was like he had just put his hand into like a, you know, like a, a grinder belt sander oh, yeah. every day for three hours. <laughs> I mean, it was just amazing the way his hand felt and like every knuckle was as big as a cue ball. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was just, uh, and <laughs> and then he starts talking a little bit, and I'm like, you know, how'd you get into this? And he was like, well, I was a bull rider first. He's an older guy, and I was like. Oh really? He was a professional bull rider. He was like, how many bones did you break? He was like forty-seven. He was like so ready. He was yeah. so ready with that, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he had been talking about like the geology of the place and, it, and the history, and it was really interesting. But then once we got him on talking about himself, it was when the entertainment began. Oh yeah. Uh, again, you were going three miles per hour on horses that, incidentally, stop and want to eat everything. He, really? And he was like, yeah, it's like a salad bar for him out here, and. They're eating every in the plant. desert. Yeah, in the desert, just going through the desert and in, uh, Indian canyons is what they call this. This, this some area. elevation change or a little bit, but not not a lot. It didn't like get cold or anything. Uh, but it is beautiful, and you like go into the canyons where the palm trees have been growing for years since the Spanish came and uh, planted them. You know, in the 1600s or whatever. That's how palm trees got to California. Learned that they're not native. Huh. Um, Learned that from a bull rider. But anyway. Uh, this dude, I, and I don't want to get, I don't want to divulge a lot. He wasn't even necessarily um, super comfortable talking about all the stuff that he ended up telling us. Like this dude almost you got him crying or something. No, he just doesn't like to talk about himself. But we kept asking so many questions. Well, he's a cowboy, Rhett. They they're known for not doing that. I know, but we asked questions and he kept answering, what? and he had these amazing stories. This dude, reluctant storyteller. He, he had a story about falling off of a cliff. Uh, and the horse fell on him. He broke every rib, God. every single rib. Ew. And then he had to be. He laid there for an hour. He was in. He was in Yellowstone. Yellowstone. Waiting for the bear guides who were out there patrolling to come get him and put him on a horse and take him back. Uh, he had another experience where he was clinically dead for a number of minutes and saw some very interesting things. He has recurrent dreams where. He has these th th these dreams that'll happen, and they'll happen like he's like, "I dream this eighteen nights in a row," oh. and then he tells this the, tells what it is. Just a, just a, an amazing. Like what, I mean, like wicked stuff. No, just interesting stuff where the very specific things happen, and he's being followed by multiple people on horseback, and he turns around and he can't make out their faces, and then they all start flying, and he's like, and then I wake up, and then it happened every night for eighteen days in a row, and then we're like, well, what's your interpretation? He's like, I'm still figuring that out, and he, he you know, who he reminded me of poured his guts out to. He you. reminded me of me, not you. Uh, Jack Palance's character from City, City Slickers. Slickers. Curly? Was that his name? Well, I haven't seen the movie, but I do think oh, it's Curly. Oh gosh, you gotta watch that movie. In fact, as we were out there, Jesse said the same thing. She was like, we gotta watch City Slickers with the kids because this guy is him. He won like Best Supporting Actor. Yeah, but anyway, he just a, it was a treat. It was an absolute treat That's to cool. have this guy Tell us this stuff. Did you did you try to ask him? Maybe could the horses go faster? <sighs> I thought about that at a time, but what I did is he said, if you want the horses to go faster, like if your horse falls behind because he was leading, then just give it a you know, give it a nice little kick. Not a, it's it's like a, they, it's not even really it doesn't a hurt them. It's, it's a just signal. signal. You just kind of put your heels into their side belly there, and so I got a, my my horse was taking a break to eat, which he did a lot. Spanky was hungry. And uh, 
Jesse was in front of me and she got a little bit away. And then I kind of did the little kick and Spanky got moving. And when your horse gets moving, you get moving. And like like it, this? It was uncomfortable in the in the nether regions. Okay. Like I feel like I missed something. Like he didn't I didn't get a tutorial on how to like protect the boys once the horse starts galloping. Your boys swell up to size of Curly's knuckles. <laughs> and so and so I I was like, I know that there's gotta be a technique for this because I'm every cowboy doesn't have bruised balls. I mean there's they figure it out somehow. They remove them. Yeah. You keep them exactly. in a jar. All cowboys are on. castrated before No, they, no, they put them back in. Oh. After. Like marbles. It's like, it's, yeah. Like a it's sack like, of marbles. Right. Uh, well, a small sack. I don't marbles. have a sack of marbles situation, so I was in a little bit of pain. Of course, it doesn't matter because they don't work anymore. Saddlebag, it's what saddlebags are for. Now, I will say this. Here's the connection. Um, to, yeah. Here's the connection. So Bring if, this back to me. It, first of all, if you are gonna go uh, do this, do this uh, trip. I'm a little jealous, but I would wanna go fast. Oh, he also was like family friends with Garth Brooks's family. Well, he's a cowboy. Which, because they, 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 their their farms, uh, his dad's farm, and then like the Garth. In Oklahoma? Brooks, uh, no, uh, it's like Wyoming is where they grew up. Um, butted up, against, butted each up against each other. So he's got like Garth Brooks growing up stories too. We were like, you should write a book. He was like, I don't, I don't want to do that. Anyway, so if you, if you take Tony, get Tony's tour. This is like a Travelocity moment. Yeah, but the thing is, is like he may not want you to, he, you know, he he may not want to tell everybody these stories. So don't ask Tony to see if he wants to talk about it. Now, he said, I said, my my best friend and business partner uh -huh. is currently in the Grand Canyon. Um, Conversation went to me. I appreciate you that. ever uh, and he and he wanted to take the mules down into the Grand Canyon. Yeah, I said, you ever done that? He says. Twenty-seven thousand miles worth. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Twenty. Yeah. Twenty-seven thousand miles. He's twenty-seven thousand miles I'll of tell experience. You, that's doing more that. than up and down once. I'll yeah. tell you. And uh, he, this guy's he's been all over the place. He says, "My my good friend, over three Empire State Buildings worth of height in that Grand Canyon." His friend is the guy who is currently in charge of the program. Holds the world record for the number of miles into the Grand Canyon on a mule. It's like forty-two thousand. He's logging a lot of miles. And uh, he said, "There's an 18th month uh, waiting list." Yeah. And then he told me about the lodge down at the bottom that yeah, you stay in. Yeah, because you you go down on a mule, and then there's a lodge down there, and you spend the night. Yeah, it sounds like amazing. A camping scenario, and then because you can't do it all in one day, and then you ride the mule back up. And I heard that of all the people that die every year in the Grand Canyon, it's never because of a mule ride. N never. They're they're, the they're mules so are reliable. Sure footed. They're so reliable. Right. I did see the mules. You saw them uh, in a corral, but I did not go to the top of uh, Bright Angel Falls Trail or whatever it's called. The one that they they that they take everyone down. He told me. I really want to go back. My family won't do it. I'd I'd love for the two of us to go back. Oh, I'll totally do it. And we have the hookup now. Oh yeah, and uh, yeah, he said, "Call me." Skip the waiting list. Uh, you know, we might be able to work something out. But he gave me a uh, both of us on one mule. Yeah, I might get a discount mule. But he did say uh, the last thing. I, and your hat I, I want to get back to your uh, your your trip. He said that the astronauts after they went on the moon, if you believe that kind of thing, uh -huh. uh, when they got back from the moon trip. They stayed at that lodge at the bottom of the Grand Canyon for uh, a month. Why? To be completely out of the the limelight. To be basically in a place where the press could not get to them and they could decompress. And he was like, "A lot of people don't know that, but I know it because I know the guys who run that camp." And wow! It's just everybody. That's what, that's what they say. The that's, astronauts stay down when there. you need to decompress like an astronaut <laughs> at the bottom, at the of, bottom, the bottom of the canyon. So anyway, hi, that that was my highlight. I have another uh, funny story that I will get to, but I want to back to you, Link. Um, of course, I I had seen the Grand Canyon because on our our mythical road trip where we drove a U-Haul pulling my minivan all the way across the country, and we had uh, these videos are on the Rhett and Link channel and actually the Good Mythical Morning channel yeah. too, where we like had fan meetups at rest areas as we drove Interstate Forty all the way across. Uh, the country, what was that, seven years ago now? 2011, yeah. Um, 
But we took a detour off 40 to the Grand Canyon. We're like, hey, we didn't plan it, but we were like, let's see the Grand Canyon. We did for maybe an hour. So I'd seen it. So when I when we finally get there in the RV, and it, you know, it, 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 get, get, the kids have space. It's nice. I'm going 65 miles an hour with a speed limit of 70 because you really can't push this thing that hard. But there's a bed above the cab, and even though you, it's probably not that safe. It's kind of like you not wearing a helmet you, on a horse. Also, there's a different speed limit for those vehicles. No, you're talking if if you're pulling a trailer, if you have three axles, you have to drive 55. Oh, but not the RV. So they each had space to be on their screen. Or Jade was nervous. She sat with Christy in the in the passenger seat so the whole time. So they don't say buckled up inside they, there. No, the sign in the RV says stay buckled up, but. But what's the fun knew, of being in an RV if you're Yeah, I knew that, that was never gonna happen. I just had to be careful. So we had a really good experience in the RV driving up there. You, wherever you stop, you've got everything at your disposal. It's in, with you. Including anything you need to dispose of. A toilet or a trash can. Like, you don't have to get out for anything except to stretch your legs. I really like that. When we got, um, so the first night, we stayed in Kingman. Kingman. Just, just a town off Route 66. Got there after dark, after leaving so late. I was delayed. Did I mention that? Um, get up the next morning, and we so we had dr- driven like five hours. We drove the, we drove the other almost three hours to the Grand Canyon. We drove, we got the pass, and we drive. The thing about the Grand Canyon, you remember when we went there was the the elevation change is imperceptible. It's but you're bas- basically flat for all intents and purposes. Driving up all the way through the gate to the parking lot that is you get out of the car and then you walk through some some trees and then you're at the rim of the Grand Canyon. So it's just like you get you, you park the car and you get out. Now I walked ahead and we even took Jade because I knew you could take a dog on the, 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 the rim trail and I'm like running ahead so that, and I, I got to the edge before the family and I turned around because I like, I'd already seen it but they had never seen the Grand Canyon so I got there I turned around in order to watch their reaction to coming up to the edge of the Grand Canyon and seeing it for the first time. No, man, mental picture. Mental picture, got it. Uh, Because if you're filming something, you're not really experiencing it. Mm. I have a technique for that. Yeah, you could just film. You could have it down there. You got to hold it, and then you got to be in the moment. Right, right. You can't be on the screen. You got to look and film at the same time. We, We actually took a helicopter tour, and the moment that we came over the 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 rim. That's the that's the big moment in a helicopter tour, when the bottom drops out and you're over the freaking Grand Canyon. I filmed that while looking out the window. Mm, good one. D- decent footage that I'll never watch again. But this is a special moment. So I turn around and, and like the, the the family's like coming up and they're they're actually not that excited. Or well, they've been they, in an RV all day. Yeah, but they hadn't seen the Grand Canyon yet. And then they get to the they get to the edge and it was. That was the moment for me, was seeing like, e- e- I mean even Lincoln, who like, he's hard to phase, man. He's a middle child, he's just like, I'm just here, D- don't demand too much of me. It's kind of his outlook on life. Like I could tell he was like, dang, it hit. It's just real big. <laughs> it's real big, it's deeper than it's I thought. It's grand. That's what he said, it's deeper than I thought it would be. But I could tell that he was kind of like, blown away, so that was pretty cool. And then I turned and I looked at Christy, she was crying. <laughs> like, she was like, I'm I'm crying. Yeah. I'm literally looking at something in nature that has just hit me over the head so hard that I'm crying. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and it, uh, even having seen it once for a, a couple hours, and I think we, we went to the exact same spot that you and I went when we first saw the, o- over the south south rim. It, it's amazing. I mean, it's just the pictures just don't do it justice, man. You got to see it in person. Uh, so it's 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 pretty mind blowing. And um, uh, we did do a helicopter tour, which uh, uh, it was okay. I mean, it was it was awesome what we saw, but like the pilot didn't really have anything to say. 
He didn't give you a play-by-play like he the did, guys in Kauai? Yeah, the guy in Kauai was awesome, remember that? Oh yeah. That, that was yeah. awesome, and like they would time like well, Jurassic Park we, music. We had different, we had different. Um, oh, we had different guys. Different guys, but my guy was incredible, knew all they this were stuff. Good. This guy, they, yeah, this they, guy they, they play the music at go, the right time. Going a little truck. There was some music supposedly at the right time, but when we're about to go over the the rim, like we've been, there's like a, eight minute flight before you get to the Grand Canyon. And the whole time Lando's upset because his his headset microphone won't work so when he talks, he can't hear himself and no one can hear him. And so in over the course of that like eight minute trip, like he just, it just, he got more upset, more upset, more upset. While you're in, on the helicopter. Yeah, and, uh, and so then I'm getting upset and I'm like, I'm like we're getting close, this is the moment. It costs a lot of money to go on a helicopter ride. Oh yeah. And I'm like, this is the moment, is what I'm thinking, and like, he's about to blow his top. Cause he just, he wants to talk, and he's he's concerned about something, and we don't know what it is, and like, he's talking to Christy, and I'm like, ugh. And then it, I'm like, we're about to go over, I'm like, I have to salvage this so that everybody can enjoy the moment we go over the the edge. Yeah. So here I am being dad of the year, like snatching the headset off of Lincoln and off of Lando and like switching them and like saying, no, you use it, he's not talking anyway. You just, and there's other people in the helicopter with us. Oh yeah, clearly. <laughs> to, to another couple and the pilot and I'm showing my tail. Like, just, just, just take his headset, you take his, cause you're not talking anyway. It's like, what is it that you, that you wanna say? And then when, what did Lando say when he got the headset on? He said, what does terrain mean? <laughs> Cause the pilot had said the word terrain eight minutes earlier. Yeah, right, right, right. What it, does terrain mean? He was tearing mean? him up inside. <laughs> you had to know. I got no context for I'm this. like, we're going, just look out, let's look out the window. What the heck is terrain? I told him, and I, I, I calmed down, I was like, I told him. And then I, and I did get to film going over the edge and I'll never watch it back, but. Well, you know, it's interesting because uh, it's really awesome. I know that Christy was was uh, a little nervous about getting on the helicopter, and even though she did it in Kauai, so having done it once, she was less nervous. Well, she hates flying, in but general. she she sent. We we have a, a little group text with our families and a, a few other friends, and uh, so <laughs> she's like sending text. To she's the group sending a text like, "All right, we're about to go on this helicopter. We're about to do the helicopter." And so then uh, our friend Caroline was like, uh, "Is it windy?" And she was kind of just screwing with you a little bit, but then. You yeah, and we were like, well, it, it 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 was windy and they delayed it a few hours, but it's cleared up now. And then you guys went on the trip and you took a picture of yourself and like, we're all fine, so everybody knew that you were okay and you yeah. had landed. And at that point, Caroline said, good, I'm glad, uh, because a couple of weeks ago, my friend took the helicopter tour uh, at the Grand Canyon and the helicopter in front of them fell out of the, the sky and crashed and exploded and everyone died. <laughs> and so I'm like, and, I don't, and I'm reading that. And you thought it was a joke and it wasn't because I looked it up. And not, and not everybody died. I think uh, oh, more than half of the people in the helicopter died and then uh, some people got out. But that's crazy that that happened. Well, I mean, I'm like trying, and month. I was trying to figure out, is she a good friend for not telling us or for? Yeah, because you, I mean, because you still would have done it. I mean, it's a freak accident. Oh, I would have. It happens. Helicopters are not particularly safe but they are relatively safe. And this one, when the wind picked up, it did, I was nauseous almost the whole time. Yeah. Really, yeah, yeah. Cause it, it was like, it, it was, was waggling. Yeah, if, 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 it wasn't going, a side angle. It wasn't going up and down, it was like waggling. And that was disconcerting. I wouldn't have done well with that cause I get sick in that situation. Yeah, but it was awesome. I mean, you, you, we went over the widest part of the Grand Canyon and there's a, there's a, it's got a 90 degree turn in it right there. There's lots of turns in it. But um, how, how low, how close did, did you go? How far did you go down? Uh, not, at this point we didn't go down into it. At another point we went down um, just a little bit where you're just below the surface of the. But they don't like go all the way down to the river. No, no, no. Now. Um, they could probably. At other places, like my dad took a helicopter ride from Vegas to the the western end and they landed and had a meal at the at the by the Colorado River and then took off. Wow, you could just go to Vegas and do it. Yeah, and it and it 
doesn't cost any more money than what I paid to just go eight minutes from the place. But it was, I mean, they talked about, um, there's this one plateau in the middle of the Grand Canyon at this particular place that's like sacred for the uh, the Native Americans that settled there and they would climb the sheer cliffs of this plateau in the middle of this part of the Grand Canyon and have ceremonies there like and parties and such. That was pretty awesome, that stuck with me. Just just picturing that happening. Did like, you see the, the glass walkway? No, that that that's that's on the Indian reservation. That's in uh, the western end of the Grand Canyon. It's not in the um, the south rim part. The north rim was still closed because there was snow, and we flew all, over all of that. It's a, really? it's a thousand feet higher the north rim versus the south rim. Um, I mean, it it was fabulous. The RV life was 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 pretty good. So you're sleeping in the RV at night. Yeah, it was a good bonding experience for our family. What's like, the food situation? Um, we ate dinner out, like we'd we'd walk from the RV place to like dinner, but like lunch and then snacks and stuff we'd eat in the RV and breakfast. Breakfast? Yeah, we you had- You cooking, in, cooking breakfast in the RV? Christi, on a stove? Christy made, yeah, gas stove. She made her signature scrambled eggs, cheese, and sausage mm -hmm. that she would send with us when we'd go camping. We had that one morning. Yeah, that it, seems fun. It's good. I mean, it's it's good. Did it have like a wing that kind of goes out and expands and gets a little bit. No, bigger? No, mine didn't have that. Had one bed in the back, and then the couch uh, became a futon bed, and then the the table and two bench seats, like a booth configuration, became a bed, and then there was the a bed area over the cab. How do you? Do, I don't think I could do this with my kids because my kids cannot keep anything. Clean or straight? Like, you know, I, I, w I was cleaning. I was straightening your, your, and cleaning your stuff. Kids like three my, times like a day. My kids to continue to like, live in that. We thing. we had like adjoining rooms at this place, and because uh, I can't share a room with them, I just they, that would kill them all. So I, I I can't share a room. I have to be in a separate place. Try giving them headsets. But then. I go in there and it's like the way that they've unpacked is they've just taken the suitcase and just turned it over. It's <laughs> it's, it's like, the, it? the, but they haven't. They say that that's what they, they, don't, they say they haven't done that. But it's like, it's like a wild animal came in and got in the suitcase and then busted its way out of the suitcase and that's what was left. Like that's how they unpack. Yeah, it, it's, it's tight quarters in there, it's difficult. I mean, if, if I had seven more inches, I'm talking about height. Okay, I, I wouldn't. Um, if I was as tall as you, yeah, clarify that it would be difficult. I mean, I took a shower in, in the RV, and it was um, not it was fun. it was rather cramped. Yeah, and I, the water yeah. the water was not. I mean, it got like in the twenties at night, so the water was very cold, and the heater took the edge off of it. But it was still a cold shower. Well, and I, a tight shower. It, it's funny you mentioned the shower and the RV because probably at the time that you were experiencing that, I was having the exact opposite uh, experience in the spa. At the resort. Oh, you now you're going um, to gloat about the spa, and because uh, this is where another funny story occurred. Okay. Um, so we both like a good massage. I uh, we've love, established that. I love a massage. I, I, my calling in life is to be a massage critic. Like Sounds that's great. that's that's what I need to be doing. Really. Okay. I don't know if there's a market for that, but. I just travel around and give people notes on the massages they've given me. That's, I got. That's what I want to do in my life. I got the best massage I've ever gotten. Really? This woman went so aggressive. I mean, it was like, I told her, she said, how aggressive? And I, I said, I want you to go hard, and then I'll tell you to back off. And I didn't tell her to back off, and I should have. Was it, there were points when you had to concentrate on your breathing? Oh yeah, I was, that's, that's I was wincing. I was, the faces, if you could have seen the face through the hole, if there was a hole cam on the bottom of the th the table. We had one of those buddy systems. Yeah, you, you would have been, but it wasn't, the, I had a great massage. Then and you rode a horse and you got a good massage? I had a great time. Man. So then after the massage, uh, I like to use the facilities of the spa. You know, I, you get you get access to the spa. You get access to the steam room, the sauna, like, the like, plunge pool, the hot tub. Oh yeah, I and thought so you meant, like take a dump. Well, no, yeah, not. I mean, I may have done that as well, but that that's not what I was referring to. Do that before the massage. Yeah, but you don't want them pushing in a certain place, and then it, it's the release valve. There's few things that I enjoy more than just walking around 
a spa naked. You know, there's just something that- it, In the men, it's a men only area. Of course, yeah. Uh, and I don't go into the co-ed area naked. That would, I would get a quick uh, escort Reprimand. Out. And so I, uh, I, I just love the feeling of freedom and there's just something about just being just a human with nothing else except a wedding ring. And you know, there's, it is very healthy, I believe. And yes. uh, I think it's a healthy exercise and you just feel like you're one with nature except you're still in a spa in a resort. Yeah, you're not out in the, in the woods. But I don't like to have conversations while naked with other naked men. Oh. That is not my idea of a good time. No. And, um, and so, and, and, and I thought that this was kind of the spa code. You know, when we're naked, let's not talk. Maybe I was wrong. So, um, well, if maybe if you're submerged and there's lots of bubbles, but no, no, what, yeah, once you're in the hot tub, you can talk, but like you next to each other at lockers, other than excuse me, yeah, you know, or my locker's there, but especially when you're in the sauna, okay? So, I love a sauna, love it, love a steam room too. I like going in between, but. I'm in the sauna, just the dry sauna where uh -huh. you can see every, you know, there's no steam obscuring anything in there. And so I'm just sitting in there on a towel, of course, but I'm on the towel. I'm not in the towel. I'm out in all my glory. Well, the Redster is on full display. Okay. And uh, shout out Red MC on Instagram. I don't post those kinds of pictures, but um, just thought it was a good time to shout out. Because <laughs> it always is. Because they're censored on Instagram. I couldn't do it. I could probably tweet naked pictures, but I'm not that kind of guy. This is just for me. So, <laughs> so I'm sitting in there on my towel, and then a man uh, comes in and sits down. He's also naked. Uh, he doesn't sit right next to me. He sits catty corner, you know, okay. 90 degrees. He's like, I could tell that he had, he was about to say something. He was like, no, 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 no
uh, I go back, I get a day pass for the spa because I'm like, boy, I gotta get back in that sauna. I oh. love it, love the steam room. Oh. So. Love the conversation. So now I'm sitting out, uh, I'm sitting out next to the, the plunge pool in a robe. Yes. Not naked at this point because I, it's a little different when you're out there next right, to the pool. Right, There he is again. He comes out to the jacuzzi, gets naked. Yep. Gets into the jacuzzi. He's five feet from me. I'm like, is he gonna talk to me now? He's seen me naked. I told him the name of the show. He says, I watched your show. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Ah, and was he talking about the sauna? Uh, no, he was talking. <laughs> he was like the one with the, with the guy from Walking Dead with the pudding. Oh yeah. He said, "Is that what you do every time?" Uh, I was like, well, "No, we don't eat pudding every time." <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "No, do you have like a guest?" I was like, "Well, we have." You know, I kind of explained. Yeah. But then, but the whole time I'm just thinking, "Did you think of me differently mm -hmm. when you watched the show and you see me naked?" That would have been a good question. But I didn't ask that. Oh, you didn't? You felt weird, man. See, you you gotta you gotta go full bore. You're, you're saying that I should have just completely exposed myself and yeah, not he, he, not worried and he just did, he was he, right. He, he doesn't care. He was right. He doesn't care. You were you this, were this is my problem. You 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 were not fully developed in your naked. I gotta get more naked more yep. often. You gotta get more naked more often. Okay. You gotta be conversational. Assignment taken. All right. Challenge you gotta, accepted. You gotta do it. Uh when I was in uh a similar situation. I was the first person in the hot tub area and I just had my robe on. This was before getting a massage in Puerto Vallarta. Mm -hmm. And I got naked, I get in the hot tub, turn on the bubbles, it's a big one. Probably could have held eight to 10 men. Eight I was the only one men. in it. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna express my dominance over this oh, place. I thought you were gonna say express your anal gland <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> I didn't know what was coming. And I just, I, it, this was um, before my massage. I'm just loosening it up. So I, instead of sitting on the bench seats at the edge, I get in the middle of the rounds uh, hot tub and I just proceed to do stretching and yoga. Just there, like like warrior pose. Like, and then guys start coming in. And then I'm like. You're stretching? I'm stretching. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna be the weird naked guy standing in the middle of the hot tub stretching. Yeah, that's And no weird. one's gonna join me. And nobody joined me or had a conversation with me. So I recommend that next time. Just That's a way to shut it all down real a, fast. Yeah, next time you're naked and don't wanna talk to somebody, just go into the warrior pose. Okay. Like that. I'll do that. I, I, I gotta, I, we gotta extend the time a little bit because I gotta sure, tell go you one more it. thing that happened. Grand Canyon was awesome. Um, our tour guide for, we took another tour which was like, um, it was called a Jeep tour because we were in kind of a Jeep but it wasn't that. Kind really, of a Jeep tour. It was uh, on Travelocity they said, you gotta get Werner, he's a German guy. Mm. So I requested him, he was awesome. Okay. I mean, you gotta read your Travelocity reviews before you start booking tours and stuff like that because you probably could have heard about your curly guy. Yep. And you should leave a review to that end, but everyone was recommending this guy, he was awesome. Teaching the kids about geology, how the Grand Canyon was made, taking us to secret spots. Right. Seeing elk, just wild elk. You saw elk? Yeah, because we went on these dirt roads leading up to the Grand Canyon and you could stop and see elk around there. It was awesome. Hmm. And then we're talking to him and he's like, well, are you leaving? Uh, when are you leaving? We're, I told him, well, we're gonna stop in the RV halfway getting back to LA. Um, and he said, well, you should take, depending on where you're gonna stop, you should take old Route 66 for a little bit and go to the Grand Canyon Caverns. The Grand Canyon Caverns. Grand Canyon Caverns. Um, never heard of that. Never heard of that. Some of the largest dry caverns in North America, maybe in the world, Typically a cavern is wet like, you know, the Linville Caverns and all that type of stuff where it's like stalactites and stalagmites. Dripping. Uh, we decided to take him up on his offer. So first of all, I'm driving on Route 66 in an RV. I am dadding so hard. I just felt awesome. I had cleaned out the dookie chute the morning before we left and I did it right. 
Nothing spewed anywhere it shouldn't go. Good. I was wearing gloves. You got it. I had on a hat and a jacket and boots. And all the dookie ran out of our RV and the pee and the shower and sink Hold water. On, so you were dookieing in there. Yeah, yes. I, I did not take your advice. Very early on I found out I'm not gonna stop and go on public toilets when I have one right here. And I had these tablets. I told you not to do this. And I called your bluff, buddy, because I, I did some research and I got these blue tablets that you put down in the tank before you start doing number two down there. And um, I couldn't, there was no stopping the kids from doing it. And I had a little stomach oh, gosh. issue. <laughs> so, All right. And so I just, the convenience was unmatched. And it worked? You didn't smell dookie anything? It worked. It worked. Okay. Well, I had to empty that thing out twice on our excursion. Well, so much for not duking in an RV. Uh, it was the fine. first thing I'm it gonna really, do next time I get on. It really online. was fine. You had a bad experience in that trailer and it doesn't it doesn't translate to my experience. But we had a bad experience with the RV in uh, going across the country year, 2008, 10 years ago. That's true. And in a bus I, one I, time. You gotta put the tablets in. I don't know how long you can drive on Route 66. I mean, it's like a two lane road before there was a four lane road. If you've seen cars, mm, you understand yes. that like this was, this was like the way, man, that you could take your car and go across America from Chicago to LA. Mm -hmm. So in this particular part, we detoured off Highway 40 in order to go to Grand Canyon Caverns. And being on um, Route 66 was pretty fun. It was pretty awesome. Um, it was kind of desolate. It's, it's what, what you think it would be. And Google Maps, Tells me, okay, pull over here. Here's Grand Canyon Caverns, and it's just no signage. No, it's just a dirt road. And I'm like, this is, and there's a dumpster with trash. This is the largest everywhere. dry caverns in America, and this is what the entrance looks like. And I was at the wrong entrance. Oh, good. But then I get back on the road and I go another mile, and I'm like, it just looks like a gas station. But it says Grand Cavern, Grand Canyon Caverns Inn, and then you drive through this thing. And it looks like it's still 1960, like old service station. And then you drive about two miles down this like patchy paved road and you get to just a one story building with like four or five cars parked in front of it. And it says in huge letters on, on the side of the building, Grand Canyon Caverns 2018. Come to find, gives you the year. I come to find out that every year they change the year on the front of it because people like to take pictures in front of it. And there's like a huge dinosaur that looks like it's from a miniature golf set, mm -hmm. miniature golf location. Of course. This is like a straight out of 1960s tourist trap. Right. And it hasn't, they don't have enough money to like change it that much. <laughs> and I'm pretty excited. Um, the kids are looking at me like, where are we? Christy's like thinking, if we go in here, are we ever gonna come out? Right. And that's, this is not the caverns. That's this a is good just feeling the, to have. This is just the building. Get in there, there's some people eating at the diner, like eating the biggest pieces of pie I've ever seen. <laughs> and then there's a gift shop that has the saddest 30 year old knickknacks that you could ever imagine. And like magnets from, there was a magnet from Topsail Island, North Carolina that you could buy. It was weird, man. They were like stuffed, scarecrowish type people. You know, if you took like country clothes and put them, like stuffed them full of hay, like a scarecrow, like put them up on chairs up above. It's hard to explain, but it's just weird. Yeah, I man. don't understand. You don't, you don't want to get locked in here at night. And then. You, you go to you go to the far end of it and there's an elevator and you can pay, you pay your money and I paid the money. Went back into the parking lot and ate our lunch and then we they gave us poker chips and with these poker chips, we were able to get in the elevator with a tour guide and go down 200 feet, 2,000 feet. Go down 2,000 feet into these caverns. What? And we start hearing the story of 1927 a guy was riding his horse and it was pouring down rain and he stops on the way to where he was going to like um, under a tree and he realizes that all the rainwater's running in this hole and it's not filling up. 
and he comes back the next day with his with his brother, his little brother, I think, and he ties a rope around him and lowers him. Always lower the brother, not the yourself. Young, the yeah. younger brother with a lantern down into this cavern. The guy thinks that he finds gold, there's like all types of shiny ores down there and he thinks he's hit the jackpot and they buy like all this land up while they're like getting samples of what it is they've got, which turns out to be nothing mm -hmm. except a big hole. Actually a pretty huge hole. Sounds like it. So he starts charging like 25 cents to lower people on a rope <laughs> down into this thing in order to just explore these caverns, which we're now walking around in and it's like, there's no stalactites or stalagmites. I mean, millions of years ago, like the limestone deposits were eaten away as water started to run through this thing and it formed these huge caverns, which fresh air comes in from the Grand Canyon. From the bottom. Yeah. And then comes up to the top. Yeah. Um, there's no water flowing through this thing now. It's sealed off, so it's dry. Um, and nothing can live in there and they found like a bobcat that died in the, they did some carbon dating on it and it was, they, they kept it down in there and they said, this bobcat died in like the mid 1800s and it still was like preserved like a piece of taxidermy because there's, there's nothing happening down there. Um, there's a hotel room down there. No. There's a, well it's just a, there's a section where they built a deck in this big open room and there's a bed and a television and they're rented out as a room. To this day? Yeah. I love this. I, I knew I you would love, love it. underground stuff. I knew you would love it. And then they'll do like spelunking, like Jacob has a